Okay, I had a question on from one of my MBA classes. I have an MBA class called Fixed Income Analysis. And uh, one of my students asked me how to solve this problem. And this problem came from, from this book right here. Um, if you're studying for the CFA, if you want to study the fixed income part for the CFA, uh, this is a pretty good study guide. And so this problem came out of here. And there's a question four and five. And then six came, so four and five were kind of intermediate steps that might, might have possibly helped it. But we're going to try and solve it without looking at four and five, because this is the question he had under this. So I'm going to just go ahead and put in some of the information we have. So it says that they're purchasing a nine-year. Normally I like to use time value money. So I'm going to go NR, PV. PMT future value and uh, so it says the, the, the bond is nine years <clears throat> don't say to maturity and uh, right after we buy it it says the rates go up to eight percent we bought it at par value so I'll just use a hundred dollars so we bought it a hundred dollars so since it's money coming out of our pocket pocket we'll just say um, by the way this is per year okay and uh, <clears throat> since it's money come out of our pocket we'll just do that as a negative 100 just to keep track and then we don't know the payment yet that's going to be our coupon payment but we know we purchased it we know where we purchased it at par so we purchased it at par <clears throat> then we say par value is a hundred dollars so the future value is a hundred dollars so this is at maturity <clears throat> and they and then the holding period on this bond is uh it says in the problem it's five years so so even though the bond matures <clears throat> in nine years we're gonna just gonna hold it for five years so we're gonna sell it after five years <clears throat> and then uh the coupon rate one more thing we need the coupon rate is this uh seven percent <clears throat> and uh that's going to be per paid annually and we want to find basically the horizon yield it asks for Um, so this is a little bit tricky. There's a couple little nuances to it. Um, uh, and we're going to say horizon yield and we'll say uh, coupons are reinvested. It's also said. Okay. So the horizon yield is how long we're going to hold, you know, the yield to five years, basically. So for a solution, um, so the first thing we might want to do is we might want to, uh, sorry, I'm looking at my notes here. We want to calculate what our coupon payment's going to be. And that's pretty easy. It's going to be equal to 7% times whatever my face value of my note is. And this is $7 per year. Okay. So that's a coupon payment. And then, and then we can look at what ha what's happening here. We have year, and we'll go zero, one, and we're just going to go out to the to the five years, and then we can calculate what kind of cash flows we have at each one of these years. So a cash flow of year one is going to be equal to this, right? And then the cash, I mean, at year zero, we pay $100. And then our next year, our next at the end of the next year, we get our first camp, first coupon payment. So it's going to be equal to this. Now I'm going to have four because every other year, we're also going to get this $7, right? Do everything to two decimal places, even though they're rounded off here. Okay. And then also in year five, 
we're also going to get the fa the maturity value of the loan back. Okay, so those are the cash flows. That's what's going on. And then, so we want to know what the future value of these cash flows are. So Excel. Now we're not going to count this because this is our. We want to figure out what the future value of these cash flows are. We got to be careful here. Now I used a hundred dollars. Now this is where you can make a mistake. I just made this mistake, but. But this isn't a hundred dollars in five years. This hundred dollars is supposed to be at maturity, which is nine years. So I got to be careful here. So this isn't really a hundred dollars. It's going to be equal to the present value of at eight percent rate, and it's going to be nine minus five years. It's going to be four more years before it matures, and our payment is this coupon payment. And our future value is going to be this hundred dollars. So and let's make that negative because we want that to be a positive cash flow. Because we're so really we're not getting a hundred dollars. So we got to be very careful there. Because remember we can't put this hundred dollars as this cash flow because that hundred dollars we don't get in nine years. We're at five years. So if I would sell it that, that's what it's worth. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so now we can find the future value of these cash flows. I'm not going to do the hundred. Uh, because that's we're going to compare we're going to take that and contrast it with these so we don't worry about that so i'm going to go equals future value in the rate now we have eight percent and i'm going to hit it half four because i want to copy this down and i don't want it to move from this eight percent i want to make that an absolute reference the number here is one year and the coupon payment we're not going to call this a coupon payment we're going to call this a uh, 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 a uh, present value because I want to, because because I don't want to take each one of these as a present value and put it up to the future, right? So we're going to call it a present value, but I want a positive answer, so I'm going to go and negative this. Oop, I, I forgot to skip payment. I just told you we're going to. I'm going to do a comma to skip payment, and then a negative present value. So that's worth seven fifty six. Okay, so hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. Number of periods is going to be five minus one, right? Because it's going four periods in the future. Hopefully, I'm not thoroughly confusing you here. And then, and then, what we should do? We want to subtract. Whoop, I'm sorry. We want to subtract. Uh, we want to make sure it stays on this five because the next is going to be five minus two years, which is three years. To, and 5 minus 3. So I want to F4 this 5 so it doesn't move when I copy it down. And then so I can copy this down this way. And then so now we have all these cash flows. All right. So we invested these and these are the cash flows. I reinvest each one of these coupons, what it says, right? We're reinvesting each one of these coupons. Year five, I can't reinvest that because I'm already at year five. And then I sell the bond, and the bond's worth this. We calculated that. So I could add all those together. So this is what we have in the future, right? So now we can calculate the rate, or we can call it the horizon yield, right? It's going to be equal to rate, and um, the number of periods is five, right? There's no payment because I took all these and just put them up to the future value. But the present value, we invested $100. And in the future, we got this. You hit enter. And I always take these out to more than one place because that rounds it off. So the answer is 6.62%. Okay. So let me put the formula in there. That's kind of a complicated problem, isn't it? But if you just kind of pay attention to what you're doing. Now, let's just check what the... But the book has the book if you look the book uh, uh, the book has the solutions down on the bottom if you get the solution menu and they get the same thing but they do it a different way so the problem is if you're taking the CFA you can't use Excel you have to use a calculator so how would you do this on a calculator so what you'd have to do is um, so these not this these numbers are all going to be the same, but let's just go ahead and do it this way. I'll do it the the way I might do it on a calculator. 
So um, with a calculator, you could use, use the math, math equations, right? So you want to use math equations. So this would be equal to uh, uh, $7, right? Times parentheses, 1 plus 8%, right? And, you know, we probably could uh, F4 that just, you're always going to use 8%. And then you're going to take that to the 5 minus 1 power. And again, this 5, we want to F for it. So you'd have to do this each time. And then if I copy that down, we'll get those. You can see those are the same. Different formulas, though. And then this, we'd have to do it manually, right? So we're going to have to take, so so we'd have to take our year six cash flow. So I want the present value, right? So I want to discount all my cash flows. So I would take, uh, it would be equal to whatever I'm getting in year six. Because I'm sitting at year five and I'm trying to sell it. So what's it worth to me? It's going to be year six cash flow, which is going to be equal to, uh, we'll just use $7. And that's going to, and you're going to, and you're going to uh, discount that back one year, right? So it's going to be divided by parentheses 1 plus 8%. And then you're going to add uh, your 7 cash flow. Again, it's going to be $7 we're going to get in year 7. Remember, we're going out to year 9 because that's the maturity. And you're going to discount that back 1 plus 8%. And you're going to discount that back two years, back to year five, right? And then uh, year eight is going to be, you're going to get $7. This is your coupon you're going to get. And you're going to discount that back at 8%. And then you have to discount that back three years, right? And then finally, uh, year, year four or year nine, you're going to get another seven dollars so it's going to be but you're also going to sell the bond right so you're going to get the seven dollars plus what you sell the bond for right um hold on let me just think about this no you're not it's not going to be what you sell the bond for it's going to be you're going to get the mature, you're going to get the face value at that point, right? And then you're going to divide it by parentheses 1 plus 8%. And you have to discount that back uh, four years. I made a mistake back here. This should be three years because this is your eight. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And if I did that right, it should be the same number we have here, right? And then again, I can sum them add them together and then to get the rate get the rising yield it's going to be equal to well you're going to use this equation here right so you have to solve this for r so it's equal to parentheses so first i'm going to take this and multiply it on the both sides and divide it by 100 on both sides to get the one plus r to the fifth over here so it's going to be equal to this divided by 100 and then I have to take it to the one-fifth power to get rid of this. Remember, this is over here on the left, and the 100 is down on the bottom. Now I have to get rid of this 5, so i got to take it to the parentheses 1 over 5. And then the last thing I have to do to solve for 1 R is get rid of this 1, so I subtract 1. And then if I, uh, if I make that into percent, take it out a couple places, we have the same answer. Okay, so that's how you would do it on the calculator. So... So if you're taking the CFA, you'd have to do it this way. You don't have future value functions and all that kind of things. So anyway, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, my, if you like this video, my picture is going to pop up here. You can click on that to subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye.